Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today's valued viewer request is from Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. I was wondering if you could make a video someday about the resource manager system and warehouses in DCS and show people if it is possible to destroy the depots in airbases affecting the availability of different resources. So usually with your request, I will go and research the thing you wanted me to research, learn how to do it, and then show you guys in a relatively slick presentation. Uh, not for this though. It's just so far away from what I'm interested in. I just didn't want to learn this and give a slick demonstration. Instead, we're going to go to the source. We have Iron Wolf here, and this is the kind of thing that Iron Wolf lives for. Say hello, Iron Wolf. Hello. He's very kindly going to assist us. So, if we make this a kind of rough guide for the layman to begin with, and then we can go into some examples, can you please explain what is the resource manager system and warehousing in DCS from a layman's point of view? What can I do with it? I guess the best example or, or thing I can cite on that is we use the resource management system in the Iran campaign at the moment, which uh, we use to limit stores and airframes at a particular base. So, if you try and uh, take an airframe from that base and it's not there, you can't. If you try and take a weapon that's run out, you can't. Um, we also use it to monitor how many were taken. And so at the end of the game, at the end of the, the mission, we will, myself and Obi, uh, will go through and look at each warehouse and see what the status of it is, record it down, and then reset that value for the next mission. That's actually really interesting. I, I didn't actually know that was possible. So that's how you're doing the dynamic part of the dynamic campaign right because what when we did coffee campaign which is the previous one which is i was kind of in charge of ish i had to count the amount of planes that had been kind of shot down in tack view which is a separate program and that's how we did it so you're doing it via this method that's correct and that's why it's important that you land at a base shut down and despawn back right. to spectators because that's how that airframe goes back into the warehouse some people don't so we have to make some allowances and use tack view to confirm it but they're getting better um if you if you despawn uh, particularly with it seems to be with when your engines are shut down. Um, the weapons that are still on your plane will go back into the warehouse, so we get an accurate count of those, and the airframe itself goes back into the house. AI, if they land and despawn, their stuff will go back into the warehouse, which is a, a thing we'll get to in a minute um, in terms of resupply. But um, Yeah, that's so that's the basic system. Um, the system has a, a, a mechanism of supply where air bases can supply each other, and there are also particular static units that can supply as well and you can in a long running campaign let's say you know a, a, a multiplayer server mission running for days it can become a factor it does become a factor even in our 90 minute missions but um over a longer term it can be a factor and we do have missions on our servers the um the grab servers operation black tiger for example makes heavy use of the warehousing system I must admit, I th forgetting people to land on air bases before they shut down, I thought you were just being pedantic. I didn't realise this was actually simulated in DCS. Yeah, so this is all new to me, which is actually quite interesting. Right, so bearing in mind we're trying to really just present this uh, to the average guy, where do you want to start, as in, because I haven't got a clue where all this is done, in, even in DCS Mission Editor. Okay, so we'll, we'll start at the beginning. So it's a, if you click on the actual... Um in the mission editor, you click on the on the uh, airbase anywhere within that big circle, which is the base capture circle. Yeah. It will bring up this warehouse and airport screen. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see there's a full info button. If you click on that, it will bring up the warehouse status for that particular base. Now, this is one of our pre-set up, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So as you can see there, there are zero airframes. If you scroll down, though, you'll mm -hmm. see there's some JF-17s and an MI-8. JF-17s, eight of them, and MI-8, whatever, whatever that is. This is an alphabetical order by the looks of it. Yep, two MI-8s. Yeah, two of them. Yep. Uh, if you look, so that's the amount of aircraft that are available. Up the top left, you can see the speed, which is the speed of resupply from the uh, warehouse that it's requesting new supply from. I've set it to 100 just so it's fast for this. The default, I believe, is about 30. So consider it 30 miles per hour. So roughly the average speed of a truck. Right, uh, you know, road transport. Right. Uh, peri periodicity is how often a supply convoy is ready to go from a supplier, um, and the size is how much it can transport at once. So uh, the default there is a hundred tons. The periodicity is, I believe, sixty minutes by default. I've just said them really quick, so for the purposes of the demonstration. 
Um, you can set it to unlimited, so you never run out. You never have to worry about supply, and that's the default. Everything is unlimited, so you never run out. Mm -hmm. um, the operating level is the level it will get down to before it starts asking for more stuff. Where is that? Sorry, um, where's, so oper where's operating level? Just on the left there, and below unlimited aircraft oh. and high not flyable. Roger. Yep, sorry, there's sorry. a percentage there. Yep. Okay. Now you can, um, once you've set all these up, you can copy them to other air bases, but you cannot copy them yet at least. We've asked for this to be changed, but to FARPs or oil rigs or anything like that. So it's kind of handy if you, they're all going to be the same. You can just go copy, 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 and and don't have to do this ad infinitum, right? Roger. Yeah. And you can select there. It says air to air. It's like, that's actually meant to be aircraft. Uh, fuel and equipment, so you can you can you can set it so you only copy specific things if you want. So what does air to air mean? Uh, air for airframes. So that air means frames. airframes, right? Okay. Yep. So fuel is liquids, equipment is equipment. They've just there's just not a consistency between the labels there. That's all. And by ticking these these three boxes, what am I actually doing by ticking or unticking them? So if you tick fuel and then hit copy to oh, uh, Abu, Abu Dhabi. It will copy the whatever you've right. set in the fuel. In this case, it's unlimited. It will copy that to Abu Dhabi. Right. And so then you can just change it again, hit copy to, and again. You know, understood. So on and so on. Yeah, very good. So if you click on liquids on the liquids tab, you see that's just set to unlimited. In the Iran campaign, that's the same. It's They're all oil generating countries. It's like we're not going to count fuel. Um, and then equipment is your weapons. And weapons are broken down into the different categories that you can see down the left hand side there. It has each one has its operating liquids has an operating level as well, so does the weapons. And you can see here this is where we do a lot of our work in the Iran campaign where we will limit the number of weapons that you can have. <clears throat> and um, if you don't return them, they don't go back into stock and you don't get them for next time. Hmm. Just like in real world. If you if you jettison your bombs now I was I was actually gonna count fuel tanks, but uh, Obi decided we're not going to count well, fuel tanks. Otherwise, everyone that chucks their fuel tanks off every time, this is, this is the first you'll time run out of fuel this. tanks. Yeah, it's the first time I've tried this, so it's going to take a while to get into everyone's head that things actually matter. So I must admit, I hadn't even thought about this. You say returning, okay. Yeah, how, exactly how that does that work? So let's just say I'm an F-15, yeah. I'm just coming to the end of the mission. I, I land on a runway and then I taxi off to the apron. Where, where, Where's the mechanism to return? Is it when I log out? Is it when I land? Where, where does that returning happen? From what we can tell, we don't know for sure because it's not documented, but from anecdotally, we've determined that um, when you go back to spectators, if you just um, switch slots, it doesn't seem to work properly. But if you go back to spectators and then into another slot, it seems to work. And it, although we have had some issues with some aircraft and we've found that if you shut the engines down first, so you get a full shutdown, then go back to spectators, it seems to work every time. So maybe there's yeah. some logic in there about that. With some, say, full fidelity aircraft versus FC3 aircraft, I'm not sure. Um, but that's that's what we've noted anecdotally. Um, and that's why I've said, you know, shut down on the base. It can be anywhere on the base. You know, it, it, will, it will pull it back in. It doesn't have to be in the parking area it can be on the runway anywhere on the actual base is fine roger right and this is all about stores so when we're talking about returning then we're going to return the stores and the airframes but not the liquids and the, well and the fuel yes wow. yep you can you can use aircraft to transport fuel to bases if you want but i'll wow. go into that a bit later how interesting okay this is um, yeah this is different okay anyway yeah let's carry on Okay, so the only other thing to really talk about at this stage is the suppliers part over on the right-hand side there. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can see there, I've got stat it's got static ammunition depot one. If you if you zoom out on the map, you'll see. Whoops, slow, slow down. Whoa, yeah, I lost <laughs> Just, him. Uh, yeah, I see. There's something over from Chiara. Is that it? Yep. So if you look over just near, no, it's um Bandar Jask. Oh right! If yeah. you look to the right of Bandar Jess, there's a square with a circle. Oh, it's a little looks like a weapon. What is that? Okay. So, so, so that's a that's a static. That's an. Oh. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's a static. That's an ammunition depot. Okay, and if you click on full info, it's got the same setup as an airfield, right? But now you see, I've put a hundred, hundred PL fives, and you'll see there's a hundred SD tens and. Um, 
some other bits and pieces, airframes mm-hmm, and stuff in mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You note it doesn't have any suppliers itself, but you can have a chain of suppliers as well. So in the Iran campaign, um, the Red 4 has factories up the back of Iran in the countryside, if you like, and they, in theory, feed to the... Um, to the airfields now we we do that manually but if if a round campaign was basically paused when we finished and left running on the server and we came back to it you know in theory that uh, that mechanism would work and keep resupplying the bases as needed so are you saying so, that this this guy here is linked to bandar ijask in some way yep so now if you if you go back to bandar ijask and just click in the circle there yep and then hit suppliers and click add Mm-hmm. All right, you'll see that there's actually an arrow which shows the direction of supply, and it can be two directions. You can go both ways. Um, you would have to go under the other one and obviously say Bandai Jask is its supplier. But you can link these. You can have, um, you know, if you want for a demonstration purpose, just scroll out and click on Fajara, for example. You want me to click on Fajara base now, yeah? Yep, yep. Stand by. Just, just, there's a little square there you can see. Yep. Look at that. Yep, so now it's supplying Fajara as well. So is this, just back to this... Oh, sorry, Fajara is supplying it. Just, back, um, just... Mm-hmm. Back to this ammo dump here. Does he have a finite amount of stores and he's going to give them to Bandar e Jask via the rules that we set up at Bandar e Jask with speed and periodicity and size? Uh, yes. When, when was um, this happen? I didn't know about any of this. This is all new to me. When did this get implemented? All this stuff. As far as I know, it's been in since FC2. Um, it just, point. it was, it was quite broken for a long time mm-hmm. and no, thus no one used it because it was broken. Um, but there have been some changes that were in other areas concerning weapons and so forth that have now anecdotally seem to have fixed most Mm -hmm. of the problems um so yeah it now works fairly well it's not perfect and we've actually found some bugs in it Mm. doing this video but um we can um we won't talk about that but i've reported it and it should Mm -hmm. hopefully get fixed soon is this now i know i'm aware that they're developing some sort of uh, single player dynamic kind of campaign option do you reckon this is kind of the back end for it for the supply type thing or do you reckon it's completely separate or we just don't know i don't know that dynamic campaign is single player but i do know that they have said that um supply will be a factor of um yeah. of dynamic campaign but I don't know any how how to what extent or whether it's the same method or they've devised a new method of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be revealed in due course, I guess. Okay. If you want to delete a supplier, you can just click on, for example, Fajara there, and then hit delete. Mm-hmm. And it's done. And if you if you want to get out of that mode, just click add again, and you'll drop out of that mode. Very good. Okay. So what we've now got is Bandar E Jask, and we've set some rules up for the resupplyability of it. What it's got at the moment, or what it starts with, and a finite dump up here that we can supply. Uh, so when you know that arrow, let me just go there. The arrow that I oh, can't get it up now, but there, that thing there, is the size of the arrow molded then modeled in any way. So is the distance of that ammo dump to Bandar E Jask in any way uh, decide how you know how? fast the stores get there or is it just make believe can you put it just anywhere on the map um okay so the speed of supply as it's written there is 100 knots let's call it 100 mm. miles per hour for ease of sight it is meant to be road transport so in theory it should be the distance by road transport between one point and the other mm-hmm. i think more likely and, and again this isn't documented so i can't say for sure but i believe it's just as a crow flies so mm-hmm. Let's say that's 100 miles for argument's sakes. If it was going 100 miles per hour, then resupply from when it was sent to when it arrives should be one hour. That's fine. That's just perfect. So that so the distance of, of the yeah. thing away is modelled one way or another, yeah. Yes. Well, it, yes. It's meant to be, yes. Very good. Okay. Okay. So we can probably um, now do a quick little demo if you want to Absolutely. run through that. Uh, actually running the mission, yeah? Yep, yep. Okay. So you just have to follow my prompts. Right, so I'm starting the mission now. I'm not going to save any changes. Right, 
I'm jumping in now. So just jump in the game master slot for now. That might. Oops. So I've got uh, game master on Rele relevant coalition. Okay, I'm I'm here. Yep. So just put um, just click on bandage ask, the little mm -hmm. blue and yellow. Yep. And then click on resources down the bottom. And you can see the resources that are there. So you can see the 12 SD10s, the 12 PL5s. And if you click on aircraft, you'll see the MI8s. And the, yeah. You may need to click on it and then click resources again. Sometimes it updates, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. It's a bit strange like that. Okay. Okay, yep. So just hit OK there. And then uh, close that airdrome data window. Now, 90 seconds, and you can fast forward a little bit if you want. Um, two Jeffs will take off from... Bandage ask okay, just gonna get with to, weapons on. We're going to get to 90 seconds. And they are programmed through, the, in the normal way, through the trigger system. In, yeah, in, yep, yeah. yep. Now, the resource system affects AI. If you have AI spawning there and there are no aircraft in the resources, they won't spawn. Just nothing will happen. Oh. If there's no weapons there for them, they'll spawn with no weapons on. So, for example, if you if you go in and look at these GIFs, so I've actually, I've actually configured these GIFs in the mission editor to have tanks on. But there are no tanks there, so they're taking off Sans tanks. So let me get that right. You've given it a loadout in the mission editor, but it can only take what's actually available at this airport as we, as mm -hmm. it stands at the moment. Right. Again, since when's right. that been a thing? Sorry. Since when's that been a thing? Again, that's always that's, oh. years. Wow. Okay, so just pause. Pause. Okay. So you can see there it's got resources sent from 1 to Aerodrome 21. Mm -hmm. So what's what's happened is these Jeffs have disappeared. They've taken weapons out of the resources. Mm -hmm. If you go into F10 and then click on the base again. Click on the base. A little blue and white thing. Yep. And then resources. And then you'll see now there's ah. two Jeffs missing. Mm -hmm. There's no MI8 missing. If you click on air-to-air -air missiles... Uh, where was it? Click, Click resources it? again. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh. Now you'll see there are there are eight um, SD tens missing mm -hmm. and uh, four four PL five. Oh. So they each had two wing with tip missiles and uh, four SD tens oh. times two aircraft. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now if you click on OK there, and then on the on the cross on the airdrome data, and then go over to that factory that ammo dump. Mm -hmm. And just there's a little arrow at the top right of the little status thing down mm -hmm. the bottom there. Yep. That gives you the same window. Mm -hmm. You'll see now there was 100. So the number on the right is the the, um, the number that was in stock initially. Mm -hmm. And you'll see there there are uh, four PL5s and eight SD10s taken out of stock because they've been sent as per this message up the top here. So one, and we've... We've put in a, a bug request to have this fixed, so it actually gives you a name. But one is that one is that store, that ammo dump, and Aerodrome Twenty One is Bandage Ask. Roger. So where, if you where, go back to, mm. sorry, if you go back to the airport for a sec, I'll just show you one more thing mm -hmm. that I forgot to show you in the other window. Mm -hmm. You'll see how it's got E four and E eight. Yeah. That's what is expected to be delivered. Huh. So it's expecting eight and four to come um, via shipment. What does the E mean? Expected. Expected. Yep. Right. Okay. And let me just go and quick click on this one again. E E zero. Does that mean anything in this case? Yeah. So no, because it's not expecting anything in. Right. Right, it's only what you're expecting in. Right. So we're so we're sending those missiles and those yeah those missiles over. Okay. Um, and w w is it at this point simulating the little truck driving a along? Well, not literally, but you know, is it simulating when will they arrive? I guess that's the thing, as per so the, the things we've set, the, right? The imaginary trucks will travel at the speed that is set in the in the warehouse, so in the, in the ammo dump settings, mm -hmm. which is the same as JASCs. So it's 100 knots, 100 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. um, they're sent every five minutes, so there's a, a convoy leaving every five minutes if needed, mm -hmm. right? And um, basically, if you imagine drawing a straight line between there and there, traveling 100 miles an hour, it'll arrive in that time. So it's approximately two minutes. I've timed it. So Roger. Um, That's why I set it high, so we don't have to see it sitting for hours. When it arrives, 
when it arrives, do we get? Does, does it tell us? Will it just magically appear at some point? Yep. So if you just unpause now and yep, let it go to about the three minute mark. Just maybe put it on like four times acceleration or something like that. Okay, we're currently at three and a half minutes, but they spawned late, obviously. Yeah. So, so yeah, it'll. It's about three minutes from when they spawned. Will I get a little uh, syntax in F10? Yeah, so you get. Well, it's not just in F10. It actually comes up on the screen mm. as you saw. Same as the other one. Mm. When it was sent, it'll show you the same style, mm. saying it's delivered. There he is. Stop. Yep. So now it's saying resources delivered to Airdrome 21. So if you click on Bandai Jask again, resources. Go on to resources. There they are. So you now have 12 missiles I'm again. No expecting. I'm no expecting. And probably uh, aircraft as well. Because I set it to like 500 tons of stuff. There it'll, it is. It's the aircraft as well. Right. So, What is the, on this message, 00348, is that the time? What is that? What is that? Uh, again, I'm not sure. There's no documentation on that, but um, we have asked through our closed beta yeah. team um, exactly what's going on with that and making it more meaningful. Okay. All the, I so say, the natural follow-up questions are, Obviously, there's no way or... No, here are the follow-up questions. Uh, if someone comes... And, if Reds come and bomb that uh, ammo silo thing, is it no longer operational? It will no longer resupply Bandar Ejask? I'm glad you asked. I set up a demonstration of that. If you oh. now uh, s switch slots and spawn into that MI8 and just... You can just stay in it or you can go back out again okay. after a couple of seconds if you want. Hang on a sec. So I'm going to go MI8... Uh, un unpause okay, it. So, That's already done it for me. Yeah, you can un un unpause it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and in about thirty seconds from now, the one of the um, resources will blow up. So, yeah. switch to F10 for a second. I'll just quickly show you. Okay. If you zoom in on on about where you are. Yep. Yep. See the little icons near you that look like that ammo dump. Yep. Yep. So it's already blown up, but you can see. See how that there was four. Mm -hmm. There's now three, and there's a pile of wreckage there. You can see that's the um, blown up building. Oh. If you click, if you click on the icon for the for the airfield again, yeah. and go to resources, you'll see that you have now lost a quarter of your resources because there were four ammo ah. storage facilities. If you click on uh, missiles, air to air missiles, you'll see a quarter of them are missing. How about that? So bombing these airfields is actually taking away their supplies. I had no idea that that was modelled in any it. way. And obviously the little fuel can things are, mm. are fuel. Obviously with unlimited fuel, it doesn't really matter if you bomb those. But um, mm -hmm. if you, yeah, they're also quite spectacular. If you look at it in, um, if you so, go yeah. into the aircraft, you'll see, the, you'll see them blowing up. They wow, look at that. Accelerate time, they just cook off and all the ammo cooks off. Wow. Okay, right. Next follow-up question. Any idea if they have any interest in, at some point, modelling the convoy going from ammo depot to Bandar so that it can be intercepted? Is that possibly going to be a thing or never going to be a thing? Uh, I can't speak for ED, but I know that if I was if I was put in charge of it, I would do it. Um, I think. Why? Right, because it's already got the logic in there to send a bunch of. It's already got the logic in there to send a bunch of trucks from there to there, as long as they're the roads. No, it didn't even need roads. Yeah, I guess okay. you got to remember that this, this this system has actually been around for quite some time. But the resources that would be needed in a in a mission to have trucks going back and forth and that were you know back in the day probably not strong enough to warrant doing that because everyone would be like, oh, my mission's slowing down because sure. all these trucks going back and yeah, forth. Yeah, that's fair enough. So um, now though, I mean. Mm. It's probably probably doable. You could also maybe even give them a slightly simplified AI because you know they're not going to fight, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to they're just going to run on rails. Um, so does that mean that? And this has opened up for me a whole world of possibilities. Does this mean in Iran campaign, for instance, if we bombed something that had, for instance, one of those symbols, or one of those symbols, or one of those symbols, it would actually affect the amount of operational ability of one of the airfields or in Iran campaign. Yes, and that's what Red have been doing to Blue right. quite consistently lately. That Their glide bombs right. have been targeting them and um, take out 
a large percentage of our available weapons at the time. So. I assumed it was all for show, just like, oh, we can do this or we can do that. I never actually thought of bothering to go and bomb somewhere because I didn't... How interesting. It's all slipped me by somehow, and this really opens up some really interesting possibilities. The only thing is... Well, yeah, sorry, go ahead. From a mission creator's perspective, there are, there are many uses for this. So one of them is, for example, let's say you want to simulate the actual operating praying man, Operation Praying Mantis, which this was on, that was uh, a particular year. So AIM-120Cs went around, you know, so you can just set all the warehouses to not have AIM-120Cs. So when someone runs that mission, they can't pick weapons that didn't exist at that time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and that can be quite useful both in single player and multiplayer. If you have a Cold War multiplayer server, you can say, nope, you you can, you can have a F18 because it was made mm. in 1979, but you can't have this or whatever, you know. Um, so we've done that in Iran, for example. Uh, the uh, Red Four, their Tomcats don't have AIM-7Ms. They don't have one um, C model Phoenixes, mm. things like that, um, because they Iran didn't have that. Iran doesn't have C model Phoenixes. They have A model Phoenixes. They have A model F-14, so we just limit them through that supply system. They can't pick it. How interesting. Okay, well, so one more question that's just come to mind. But similar to what we said, that means that you, we could create a cargo plane, say a Hercules, yeah? We could fly it from Fujara. We could ask it to grab some bits from Fujara. In fact, you know, technically even that Hercules mod, but we'll just ignore that. Just AI Hercules. We could ask it to take, say, 100 AMRAMs from Fujara. You could physically make it fly and you'd be able to see it and interact with it. Land at Bandar and then despawn or whatever the way it works and put the missiles into storage here. That way you've got the resupply method with a physical vehicle that could be shot down. Is that possible? Sort of. So um, if you go over to Fujara now, and just click on that. I'm pretty sure I set it up. Just click on the resources there. It should be 100 of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you now fast forward, so those um, Jeff's land oh, and Deeds yeah. Born. So they'll come in and land, um, and then they'll sit there for about half an hour of game time before they despawn. So they had the they had the PL5 E2, which you can see there, and the SD10. They're right next to each other down the bottom, about six one up. Thing is, they're out of 100 already, so I don't think it's going to add any more on. Yes, it can. It can go over 100. That's just the initial starting value right. of the warehouse. I'm just going to literally speed up to heck. Stand by. Come on, AMD, do your job. <laughs> well, it's not doing anything, so it's oh, there it as is. simple as... There it is. ST10s and PL5s are now in. So look, they've done it. Well, was mm -hmm. that? So they, it, it takes their weapons off first, So and then when they actually do spawn, the, if you look at aircraft, you'll have two more JF-17s as well. So we can have, uh, let me just think, resources. How do we? Oh, there's there. Uh, JF17, JF17. Any kind of it's order? Down the bottom, here? I think. Uh, no, unfortunately, that's, that's there it is. Oh, it's yeah. about a quarter of the way down. Yeah, it's there, but they haven't increased. So the 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 let's. No, because they haven't they haven't despawned yet. I wonder when if they, their when missiles they are gone. Look, the missiles are gone. That's it. Wow. This is incredible. I'm just what the whole stream's just like, oh my god, no one knew this was available. Right. So what we could do, based on that theoretically, is like I said, send a Globemaster rover with a bunch of whatevers, and if the reds get it, then the blues don't get their thing. Here's here's the one problem with this system for me as a as a kind of my job is to kind of present this to the valued viewers. The one problem is there's no way of visualizing. Uh, so what I'm saying is it's all very nerdy. So to find out, for instance, a base, um, a, 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 whether a base has stuff, you've got to go in here into this thing and you've got to click resource and you've got to go and click there. Now, that's great for you and Obi, but for me, who has a, you know, a slightly different brief from you guys, what I want to see is a printout at the end of the mission, a sexy printout that shows all of kind of all the bases and the things that have been added the things that have been taken away and stuff like that do you know what i mean i saw a presentation uh, uh rather than just the functionality um the one the one thing the yep. value viewers um the only only complaint we've had about this campaign we've had a complaint a night mission some people just don't like and find whatever the only other complaint is all of this is being done on the back end i thought it was all being done in your head 
I didn't realize it was actually being modeled, but great, it's actually being modeled. The first, like, my only complaint to ED is now that um, I've got no way of uh, showing this off. I've got no way of presenting it after day three, whatever. You know, I would want a nice little spreadsheet the valued viewers can come and see and say, oh, you know, uh, we used three of these planes from here, but two were added here. That kind of thing. So that's just from my point of view that supply well, logistics supply logistics presentation of some sort i mean it's just going to be it's just going to be a bit of you know a bit of um i can't remember what the word is a bit of you know databasing i would have thought but a log yeah. there is a there is a spreadsheet but it's manually maintained at this stage no, but yes no. obviously obviously if we want to run something like this say next year or later this year um again that would be obviously make our workload a lot easier so mm -hmm. it's something we we want um and we put you know in the in in the uh wish list areas of the mm -hmm. uh, ed stuff you can put that in um but at the moment we're just trying to get it just smoothed out and working mm -hmm. properly so there were some bugs uh, there used to be a bug when it updated it wipe out half the stuff in the warehouse and you have mm -hmm. to reset it all right. that was what made iran painful mm -hmm. but more recently due to some changes they made to the weapons database let's say um it's fixed most of that so yay um but yes they um there are so there's a lot of things that we'd like to see expanded on but um there until recently hasn't been much interest but i must say that we're getting we're getting roger some interest hopefully now. we can generate some interest from this video if we splash it around a bit because I, I, like I said, if I didn't know about it, you won't believe how many people out there won't know about this. No, suddenly everyone will be doing it. And so that we'll just push for that then, one step at a time. Try and get it polished like you want it, and everything working fine. I think that would be great. Uh, regards to the actual video we're trying to make, uh, we, as usual, we've kind of gone off track. Um, is there anything else you want to show the valued viewers? No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, you could show the chaining of the supply resources if you want, but I think that's just getting a bit too nerdy. But other than that, um, so you're saying that you could say no. have one guy supplying that, and then one guy supplying that. So one guy over here supplying that bunker, and that bunker then supplying those supplies off to Bandar. That's right, and right. then hitting the bunker in the middle. If you blew that up, would actually wreck the supply chain. Wow. So it would actually be a sort of weak point, if you like, in the supply chain. But you can have multiple suppliers, so you can have. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's call that one uh, ammo dump A, and you can have ammo dump B further back, you know, a reserve, uh, a strategic reserve bunker, mm -hmm, let's mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. And you can have the reserve bunker supplying Bandar as well directly, but also supplying through uh, bunker A, right? So mm -hmm. um, bunker A can obviously resupply faster, and it's closer to bunker B, so it will, you know, resupply from bunker B quicker. Right. I think that's really cool. It's r really cool. My, my, I think everyone who's going to be watching this, who didn't know about this, their head's going to be whizzing with possibilities. Um, I can just see a whole, a whole new, almost not a new game, but a whole new area developing for this. I think it's really interesting. Okay, guys. But well, sorry. Yeah. Actually, there is one one thing I should mention. You mentioned the the Hercules, and I must admit, I, I, you know, I, I know you spoke to me about it early in the piece, and there was problems with it crashing, so I never really got into it. But mm -hmm. I did note. With the FARP resupply, which should mm -hmm. also work with airbase resupply, it's the same mechanism. It, it essentially loads the weapons into the aircraft mm -hmm. as if they were mounted on the aircraft, but they're not, and then unloads them in the same way that those weapons just went off that Jeff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can't you can't make AI see one at this stage. Cannot make AI aircraft do that, but you can. Right. You know, we we could put we could put C one thirties in Iran if everyone wanted to download the module, mm -hmm. and then actually make that mechanism manual if we wanted. But if the AI um, had the ability, that would be top notch. Well, that's an ED thing. Okay, but, um, well, this is fine. I think I think it would be part of their dynamic campaign. Yeah, it sounds like it. So it sounds like going to be working on that. Great. I just decided what I would. I just I decided the way that I would want to do this. I would want to have all. I would want to have a separate map. And I have all of the, no planes on it or anything like that, but all the logistics ele elements here. And I'd love to have arrows going from each from each one to the next one 
uh, to show historically during the mission what was supplied. So a red arrow from here to there saying during that 90 minutes that many of these were supplied and that one was blown up and it'll have a big blow up sign on it. That's how I want to present it to the valued viewers. And you can see all the stuff moving around, what supply chains were destroyed. And you could, like I said, almost make a new dynamic game from that. It's so it's going to change things so much. But this is the beginning. So watch this space, valued viewers. Um, I'm Wolf's uh, uh, really uh, clever guy, obviously, and he's uh, figured this stuff out with the boys. Um, I think it's great. Uh, keep us informed if anything new happens with this, and we'll put new videos out. Um, if you can keep an eye on the... There will obviously be lots of follow-up questions on this video, so if you can keep an eye on this video, on the comments, guys will want to get in touch with you, I imagine, to ask you questions. I do, I do have one uh, last thing to mm -hmm. say. I think the more people that use this system and and find problems with it and report it, it gives an indication to ED that people use it and yep. want it. Uh, it changes their focus on what gets fixed. So if no one's complaining about warehouse not working, and, and Grim Reapers were one of the first to complain about it, okay, that I know mm -hmm. of anyway, at least make a big song and dance about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it got certain things fixed. Um, mm -hmm. But if people get it out, get on and try it out and report any problems with it and as i said i found one you know but it's been reported um it, it gives an indication to ed that people use it want it and uh would would value enhancements in it absolutely yep I, the way you do that is you've got to make it sexy um uh you've got to like i said at the end of our mission we're going to have a lovely sheet here saying all of the logistics that happen people will look at that and say fuck i want to play this game now and go into it so we just got to sex it up a little bit and we'll discuss how we're going to do that right i don't want to take people's time we're going to start going in circles thank you i'm wolf and i'll see everyone later so yeah